Hey everyone, I'm Casey with Sea Reeves Makes, and today I'm going to show you how I plan to kind of rearrange this wall and get rid of this clutter and this mess that I've got going on here. And uh, I plan to put in a nice French cleat wall here so I can get some organization and some nice layout going with uh, my power tools and what my future plan is for this whole area of my shop. So over time, this area of my shop really became disorganized and cluttered and it would always kind of be the hub of the mess in my shop. I tried to keep everything clean, but this always seemed to be the, the junk catching area. So it was time for that to go. This metal wall rack was good when I used it for bolts and nuts and stuff for assembly projects. But for the most part, again, it was just clutter that had to leave. I have two old wall cabinets up that I used for screws and jars of nuts and bolts and uh, zip ties, electrical components, things like that. But again, over time, those just populated with stuff that I seldom used or would forget I had. After the cabinets were down, I started to lay out where I wanted the wall panel to fall. and. Uh, I marked out the stud locations, and scribed the line so that I knew once I had the panel up where I could put my screws. Purebond Plywood is the sponsor of today's project and I'd like to thank them just for producing a quality product that I was really pleased with the results and how, how easy it was to work with compared to other plywoods that I've worked with in the past. I started by cutting the half inch back panel to width first and then I marked out the three quarter inch uh, cleat panel next and then I cut that to length as well. And then once I cut that to length I marked out five inch spacing for the cleat segments. Uh, that seems to be the common width of the uh, rip strips that everybody uses for cleat walls and uh, the trick with those is you cut them to five inch widths and then after that you run your saw over to 45 degrees you find the center of the part and then you split it basically in half making two identical pieces with 45 degree angle for the cleat. Then I sanded the edges of all those 45 degree angle cuts just to kind of clean them up and uh, knock the sharpness off of them. And here I'm just prepping the panel for the attaching of the cleats with uh, glue and brad nails. I also ran a quarter inch roundover around the whole perimeter of the panel just to clean it up and make it more uh, aesthetically pleasing. It was a really nice feature, I'm glad I did it. Here I'm marking out the spacing for the cleats. Uh, the spacing from edge to edge between the cleats is three and three quarters inches. This doesn't need to be three and three quarter inches, I just picked that from my number because that's what I felt um, provided the layout that I wanted for placing of tools and future tool holders and stuff like that. Again, I'm just using Type Bond 2 with an uh, inch and a quarter brad nails to hold them in place. This is pretty strong. Uh, I haven't put any screws in these cleats and I've had them up for several months now and I haven't had any issues with them. And here's a trick that I always use for locating a panel is I'll put one screw in and then I'll use the jockey post on the bottom right corner to kick it up and get it level. And now I'm just running screws into the studs and I used about eight screws to hold this whole panel up. I might add a couple more depending on how the panel holds up over time, but for now it's really sturdy and secure on the wall. Now for the tool holders, I decided that I'm not going to go into too much detail uh, verbally on the tool holders themselves because everybody's tools are different. Um, if you want any information on the specific tool holder that I have here that you'll see, uh, please let me know in the comments down below or shoot me a message and I'll respond. But for the most part, I just kind of came up with what I wanted and what would work for my shop and for my tools. And using scraps of plywood and leftover uh, materials, I just came up with uh, several holders for my tools and my sandpaper and everything like that. I'm really happy with the ones that I made and uh, how they turned out. Um, you know, I was kind of learning with every one that I made, you know, what what constituted a good tool holder and uh, was sturdy. You can see here I used a lot of screws and brad nails and stuff to hold them together. Some of the tools are fairly heavy like the belt sander and the uh, circular saw so I used screws and glue to hold them together. 
Here I'm cutting the uh, what will become the drill holder with charging station uh, features on it. Uh, again, there's several different ways you can do this. This is just the, the format that I liked and what looked appealing to me. So I'm really happy with the, uh, the outcome of this and how sturdy it is on the wall and the capability that it provides just for holding uh, six drills. And um, I came up also after I built it with the um, idea to attach a charger to each end of it or each face end of it. Uh, that was kind of a, a happy accident. I wasn't planning on that initially. I was just going to make another flat panel to hold my chargers, but determined that um, I don't need six chargers hanging on my wall to charge six batteries. Two chargers is plenty. Uh, when I'm working in the shop, I usually have a fully charged uh, set of batteries and that if I had one or two charging while I was working, that was sufficient. So I put the, the rest of my chargers in storage and I kept the two uh, that I used the most and attached them to the side of this unit. So you'll see that here in a second. But uh, again, this is just my own kind of idea. As I was building, I was coming together with what I wanted it to look like and how I wanted it to work. So you can see the chargers there on the end. It's really handy to have them on the sides like that because they're not really in the way. It's kind of dead space anyway, so uh, just took advantage of the location and it worked out perfect. And then I also ran roundovers over every area where tools would be kind of contacting the holders so there was no sharp edges. Scratching the tools up or also providing a sharp edge that you could run your hand into. So I think it turned out uh, really well and uh, I'm happy with the, uh, the layout and the versatility of being able to put it where I want it. So guys, the wall is done. I've obviously got it up and I've kind of got it laid out the way I think that I'm gonna like it for now. Uh, that's the beauty of this whole wall is that I can really move this stuff wherever I want to. If I decide that I wanna put something someplace else, I can take it off and move it around and hang it someplace that uh, you know I feel that it serves more purpose. But for now, it's kind of the, the layout that I like the most uh, as far as usability in my shop. Total size of this wall is 74 inches wide by 48 inches uh, sheet width. Uh, tall. I would like to thank Purebound Plywood for supplying all the materials for this project. Everything that you see here is Purebound Plywood with the exception of some little pieces that I had to grab from uh, my scrap piles because I didn't have enough of the Purebound left over. Purebound Plywood is made in the USA. It's a soy based product and it's formaldehyde free. It cuts great, it sands great, it goes together well, it's flat. I had no issues with any of these panels. I didn't have to cherry pick the bin to find like the best piece of plywood either when I got it. So thanks everybody, I'm Casey with C Reeves Makes and thanks for watching.